couple months ago, we made a blueberry cider that smelled like <laughs> and we're gonna redo it. So today we're using frozen blueberries instead of having to use Camden tablets with fresh blueberries. And we have here two pounds of previously frozen blueberries. They are no longer frozen, as you can tell by the amount of juice that they have excreted. Now these are the wild blueberries that I believe we purchased at Costco. And someone suggested we use wild blueberries because they taste better anyway. But you know what? Can I have that red spatula that was put into... The red <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna need some assistance. I'm gonna, well, no, I, I want you to hold this fermenter. Okay. This is the comedy of errors part of the show. Oh, golly. Yep. Whoops. Thou hast misquoted me, only you tarted one. What? <laughs> That's a quote. Let me know if you know what it is in the comments. I don't know what that one is. So I'm trying to get all the juice and everything. Apparently all the cats are waking up now. I don't, I, I think the noise removal that I do can remove them, but you might hear some anyway. Oh, I smell so good. Yeah, blueberries just, they're amazing. Now, Last time we used Kirkland apple juice, which is just pure apple juice, has no additives to it. It is from concentrate, however. But this time we couldn't find any because Costco was out of it. I hope that's not a sign of things to come. So we ended up going with Lakewood Organic pure apple juice, which the ingredient is organic apple juice. That's it. So I'm gonna give the bottle a shake because there was some goop in the bottom. You want all that goop, you know? A little bit of extra nutrient never hurt anybody. For that goop. That's right. It's your goop. You should have it in your cider. <laughs> I almost got it out without laughing. Um, but it's a little tiny bit of extra nutrients. You know, it can't hurt. And I shook it up like that. So now here we go. We're gonna pour it in. And I'm pouring very sloppily in such that I can get extra oxygen in there. And um, everybody loves that sound. <laughs> I'm not gonna throw a glass jar. Okay, uh, next bottle. Same thing. I'm gonna do this three times. You don't really have to watch all of them. Still not throwing it. That one was awful not neat about pouring. All right, at this point we have a gallon. Let's roughly. go ahead and take some notes, shall we? Before I do that. <clears throat> we bought four of these and Derek asked me before we started, are you gonna want the fourth one? Nah, nah, there's a lot of blueberries. But you know what? Why not? What's the worst that can happen? We end up with more than a gallon of cider? More really? cider, yay! <laughs> All right, we still have a lot of room, so if this gets overactive, I am not overly concerned. Now let's take some notes. Okay, four quarts of apple juice. Two pounds frozen blueberries. And then? Okay, so we have our blueberries, we have our apple juice. And because of the way I poured them, they're actually kind of pre-mixed. To add a little brightness, I'm gonna put in some lemon peel. So I just want a couple of swaths of lemon peel, that's the official term, swath. Like that. Just maybe two. You don't want a lot, eh, that's a tiny one. I messed that one up. Let me put in another half like that. Yeah, something like that. You don't want a lot, but that little bit will bring up the, uh, the brightness, the acidity of that brew just a touch. I have to admit, the aroma of this right now, I could totally drink that and Absolutely. be perfectly this, happy. This is gonna be amazing. The last time we made this, um, this, this is kind of a test, okay? The last time we made it, we used Camden tablets to purify- Fresh, or, fresh blueberries. With fresh blueberries. And it did some weird stuff. Derek was uncomfortable with it. And there was an odd smell. It tasted great. It was a great tasting cider. It was an odd smell that didn't seem to go away. This time, we're trying to not have that smell. So we'll find out, is it the blueberries? Is it the yeast? Is, what is it? We think it might have been the Camden tablets. A lot of people have had some opinions on it and they're all over the board. Nobody has a, a clear answer as to what it possibly could have been. So we'll find out. Next. Not that. What's next? Oh, probably want me to take a reading. Or do you want to put in your- I got to write notes. Your nutrients. 
two lemon swaths. And then uh, I am gonna put in a, some yeast nutrients. We tend to use the yeast nutrient all the time now. And I'm taking on a slightly new philosophy when it comes to yeast nutrient. Um, one of our members, not members, one of our audience members has said that he uses a lot more Firm 8 than the manufacturer suggested. The manufacturer suggests for 1.5 grams per gallon. It's not very much. We've been doing 2.5 or two. So this is a low ABV. I'm using three today, okay? But normally we're gonna use five in a like a, a typical wine or meat scenario. But today I'm gonna use three because I don't think this needs as much. Now you may be wondering why not just go full on and dump a whole package in there. And the reason being is that there is such a thing as too much nutrients. Just like there's a thing of too much fermentable sugars, there is a thing of too much nutrients. However, using this specific type of nutrient for made O, it doesn't cause as much of a problem as some of the other nutrients can cause. Also, for made O comes in five pound containers. So I don't want to put five pounds in no. there. I think it comes in smaller ones too. This happens to be Safe Ale SO4 yeast. And, you know, I give a lot of companies a lot of a hard time about their packaging. This is one of them. I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed that I have to cut it with scissors. But By you the way, have this lovely collection of scissors due to yeah. your. Now, I'd also like to point something else out. Someone thought that we were infecting our brew by using scissors that weren't sanitized to cut the package open. Please don't make fun of people for things like that. I don't make fun of them. When you're new and you, all you hear is sanitize everything, you start to think that way. There's a certain point at which it becomes probably not much of an issue. Because if we want to get that technical, everything in the air, you know, you need purified air, you, you need know, it room. gets insane. We'd have the, the little booties. I don't so, know, I kind of want little booties. <laughs> So we try to be as sanitary as possible without getting crazy about it, okay? There's there's a limit to how much it probably makes a difference. A lot of people like to say, oh, back in the day, our ancestors always did it and they didn't sanitize anything. Yeah, and you know what? They did it for pr food preservation purposes and they probably drank a lot of really bad cider, meat, and wine because it was made and they weren't gonna throw it away. So- but They also probably had the, get, the gut bacteria that could well, deal yeah, with that. You know, we've, we've devolved. Yes, but, we have. Um, Regardless, I'm using a half packet of US 04 Safe Ale SO4 yeast. Um, this is an ale wine, an ale yeast or beer yeast, and I like it. I've used this for many, many beers and ciders over the years. It works phenomenally well. But I mean, Brian, you're using an ale yeast and you're making cider. Doesn't that mean you're making ale? No. <laughs> She's referencing another video that I made. Um, yeah, there, there was, there's a mistaken idea. Some people think that wine yeast can only make wine, meat yeast makes meat, and ale yeast makes ale. It, it doesn't actually work like that. It, yeast is yeast, really, in that respect. They're all Saccharomyces cerevisiae. They have slight differences and can produce slightly different flavors and esters and things like that, and they have different alcohol tolerances. But for the most part, they can all make anything. So with that in mind, why did you choose this particular yeast for this particular beverage? because I have great experience using it. <laughs> that is the truth. Also, because ciders in general tend to be the same ABV range as beers or ales. Right. So that's why we tend to use an ale yeast when we're producing ciders. Right. You know what we didn't do yet? The gravity reading. We didn't take a gravity reading. Yeah, I didn't want to disturb you. Yep. We're on a roll. I was on a roll. Um, some people like to think that it's bad to take gravity reading once you've added yeast. Yes, if you wait a day or two days to take your gravity reading, it's a bad idea. If you do it like right now, do I have it, to... you don't have the hydrometer out here yet. If you do it like right now, you know, right as you're putting stuff together, it really doesn't make much difference. The only thing that's important here is I want to make sure I don't get any blueberries because they'll just hold up the works. Like See, that. like I sucked one up already. If you push it towards the side, you can avoid. I can try. I'm just gonna go bit. all the way to the bottom. Nope, they're all no, over the they're place. they're everywhere. They are omnipresent. What the? The side, huh? Oh yeah? <laughs> Saint <This> working. <laughs> We're gonna make her snort over here. There we go. Just gotta rub it around and break it off. That actually works really well. I rubbed it on the bottom 
and got whatever was stuck to it to just come off. I'm not expecting super high gravity, like 1.050 or so, something like that. It still smells wonderful. Well, I didn't change anything that would make I know, it smell different. I know, but I just, I'm just, I'm appreciating. 1.050. Today's date. 6.21. So with a 1.050, that means this can come to eh, probably like six and a half, six and three quarter percent ABV, perfectly acceptable for a cider. It's actually on the higher end for a cider. With carbonation, that will probably do, it'll end up like 7%. So that's, that's a pretty strong cider. It should have a really amazing blueberry flavor. What we want to do is put a lid and airlock on it. If you think you don't need an airlock, think again. You need an airlock. Everything needs an airlock. Please, please, please do not try to take a full brew like this and cap it or bottle it or seal it up because all you're going to do is, yes, you're making an explosive device unintentionally. I don't know how dangerous it could really be, but flying glass is just not something I really want. We've had quite a few report in oh, yeah. that it was a bad situation, it, it, so. They had a bad experience, They okay? did. So, what's gonna happen to this now? We're gonna let it sit. How long? Uh, I don't know. As long as it takes. As long as it takes. What we do though, is we watch this airlock, okay? It's a sign. That's all it is, it's a signal. It's kind of like the pirate's code. It's a guideline. So we'll watch this and it'll start going and it'll start bubbling. And then at some point it'll start to slow down. And when it's pretty much not bubbling anymore at all, that's when we'll take the first reading. It's probably gonna be a week to two weeks, but if it takes a little longer, it's okay. If it happens a little faster, that's okay too. We've heard of ciders that finished in two days and three days. Not a problem. We've also heard of them that took a month. Either way, it's perfectly acceptable. Not a problem. Come on, however, because this is a new startup, we do have a good amount of headspace, plus we have the extra reservoir that these particular caps include that may take care of a potential blowout if it happens. But to be on the safe side, we are actually gonna place this on a cooking sheet that has ridges. So if it does explode Lips, over, sides. it'll be captured in that tray rather than all over our kitchen or our fermentation station. Also known as a containment device. But anyway, we're just gonna stick this on here, put it in the fermentation station with a, with a tray and we'll see when it's ready. No, we really aren't wearing the same clothes two weeks from now. It's actually the same day. We just forgot okay, something that something. we're going to start doing to most of our brews, if not all. And that is taking a pH reading. What I want to do is just use my pH meter, which if you don't have one, they're really inexpensive. $15 to $20. We'll have links to that. And I'm just going to stick it in so that the uh, sensor is in there. And usually fermentation, you want like somewhere between like a 3.7 to a 4.2 to 4.5, but each yeast is a little bit different. But if we're right around four, I'm pretty sure we're safe. I think it's 3.3 to 3.7. Every yeast is a little different. Ah. The uh, the QA23 was actually 3.3 to 3.7. That's a little bit Google off. Google Foo real quick? Yeah, let's do some Google Foo and find out Google what Foo. Safe Ale SO4 is. Because right now I'm sitting at 4.0. All right. Google Foo has finally failed us. <laughs> for some reason, searching for US 04, we couldn't find anything. But I happen to know that most brews, it's like 3.7 to 4.5 is a pretty decent range. We're sitting at 4.0, perfectly acceptable. Now, we're gonna put the lid on, put it on a tray, and sit it on the side and let it do its thing. One week in, our airlock is already showing pretty much no activity. Yeah, we loosened it, sorry. And we want to take a gravity reading because this might actually be done. It's a cider. It could happen. So if you push it to the side below the fruit cap, you might and avoid that one. There we go. There we go. That is a gorgeous color and it it's is. clearing and everything. So the foam is actually from our foaming sanitizer. Star Sand is a foaming sanitizer, so don't fear the foam. It's supposed to do that. We just have a little extra this time. I got a berry in there, I think, this time. Rat row. Oh well, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. Yep, there it is. <laughs> Are we floating? <sighs> oh, whoa, I think We're it, just it, floating. It did do its it thing. It did done. It it did done. Yeah. <laughs> it did done it. I don't even I'm not even speaking English anymore. It's okay. Uh, 
Our original gravity was 1.050 on this, and today it is sitting at 0 0.994. Uh, I'm gonna call that done. 6, 28, 23, 0 0.994. Okay, now we always say take two readings one week apart. However, when it comes to ciders and lower ABV, I want to get a move on faster because we've had issues where carbonation didn't take and we want this to carbonate. Right. Also, there's a lot of fruit in there and it's not sinking. Yeah, the fruit didn't sink at all. We don't want to have, ooh. We don't want to put that in there either, right? Do we want to rack this today or do we want to let this sit for a couple of days I first? I thought the whole point was to rack it. Wasn't that what you were just saying? Yeah, I was starting to. Okay. Yeah. I didn't disturb anything though yet, right? No, there, oh. there was a layer down there and there's a layer up there. It's just, it just is what right. it is. We're going to rack this to an open mouth, a wide mouth uh, fermenter, because there's not going to be as much liquid yeah. once this we is all gone. We have all the fruit that's floating and then we have all the sediment down here that has already flocculated it's like out. like that much sediment. So there's a lot of stuff in here. All right, so let's get to racking. Okay, so... I would like to just get a little taste of this too. Pour a little bit off. It is a lovely color. It's beautiful. Very blueberry. It's very dry. But the aroma is nice. Yeah, it actually smells like blueberry. It smells a little thin, tastes a little thin right now. Don't worry, we'll fix that. Hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's dry, a little watery. It's a cider, you know? But anyway, we're gonna rack this. And then all that means is moving it from one vessel to another, leaving behind the solids, which would be all the blueberries and the lees in the bottom. All right, if you would like to put your sample into oh, yeah. the destination. I'm, I poured the sample into the destination because if I poured it right in here, I could unsettle everything and have a problem. So you just wanna be careful when you pour it in so you don't uh, oxygenate too much. And I'm going to try to put this past the blueberries, but not quite into the leaves. In the midsection. The cap is on because, wow, there's a lot of stuff in here. And then she has the destination over here, with the hose all the way to the bottom. You want to make sure it's lower so that when you start to siphon, it'll actually work. If you would like a more detailed explanation of our racking procedure, I will link that video in the description below. All right, so we racked. Look at how much was left, but... This is why we love the big mouth, little big mouth bubbler. We have a full gallon. That's actually a little bit more than a gallon, which is really awesome. Now we're just gonna put a lid back on this with an airlock. And I, I have my notes that I took and we're just gonna leave this in the fermentation station for another week. Let this clear out fully. And then we'll be back to show you how to prime for carbonation, sweeten and bottle. Okay, so it's been about a week. We racked it. It was at 0.994, so we're pretty sure it was done. And now we're just going to rack it again. Might be wondering why we're racking it again. Probably because there's a little bit of stuff in the bottom there called lees, and I don't really want that in our final brew. Plus, I like to put it into our fancy schmancy pitcher with the raised numbers on it so we know exactly how much we have, and then we can sweeten it from there and do all the other things that we have to do. But first, we gotta get it from here into there. Let's do that using an auto siphon, just like last time we racked it. I am leaving the cap on, because I don't know what kind of layer we might have in the I bottom. I see a little residual clumpies over here. Yeah, see, see? But it's difficult to see because it's super dark. Yep, so I'm playing it safe. But look at that color. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It smells really nice too. So after racking, we have 112 to 114 or so fluid ounces. And what I want to do now is we're going to get a little taste of this to see how sweet we'd like it to be. See if there's any other adjustments that need to be made. So I have my handy dandy little tasting glass here. By the way, I love these little Belgian tasting glasses. They're actually Belgian beer tasting glasses, but okay. they work really great for this. They have a nice wide body and um, a fairly narrow end. So you can do the swirl really well. Yeah. And it funnels the smells really nicely. And because they're stemmed and look fancy. Yeah, looks all hoity. There's so many lovely things I can say about this, but I'm going to save it for when we do our final tasting. Beautiful color. It smells more like blueberries. Our last cider, this is why we did this one, had a, a something on the smell, something in the aroma. This one does not. It smells like blueberries. It needs lots of sweetness. It needs all the sweetness. Oh, yeah. That's very dry. That's 0.994. 
Ooh, doggy. Okay. Now, because we want to carbonate this naturally, we're not going to use uh, pressure or anything like that, we could use sugar. But then we have to figure out where does it stop sweetening, where does it start carbonating, or vice versa. So instead, we're going to use a non-fermentable sugar, because that's just the easiest way to do it. And for that, we're going to use allulose. Why allulose over erythritol? Well, because we tested it. We prefer allulose. It's just so simple. <laughs> when we tested them, we I actually chose the allulose as straight sugar. So that gives you an idea of what kind of flavor profile it generally has. It tastes the most like sugar. Erythritol can taste really nice. It's just not quite as sugar-like as allulose. And um, unfortunately, allulose is more expensive. So it it's a choice. If you want to use erythritol, feel free. No problem. Okay. The way we sweeten is I dump a bunch in and we stir it up and we taste it. Now, allulose is only about two thirds as sweet as sugar. So whatever amount of sugar you think you needed, you probably need about one and a half times that in allulose. It's also this lovely fine powder. So it dissolves, it dissolves. pretty quickly, which makes it really nice for adding it into a brew. And like I said, the way we sweeten is this. I put some in, we mix it up, we take a taste. If it's not sweet enough, we keep going. I use less and less each time just so that we don't over sweeten. And the reason being, just so that you guys understand, uh, we do get questions on this all the time. When you carbonate, you are in fact fermenting just a little bit. That's why we put in a very specific amount of sugar to allow that to ferment just that far and then stop making it safe okay by using a non-fermentable sugar to sweeten it we're not adding to what can ferment if we had put say regular white sugar in here now we're adding to what's going to ferment which means we either need to find a way to stop it or they're going to blow up and i'm not kidding they are going to blow up so let's get a Taste on this. I'm expecting we probably want this fairly sweet. You know, blueberry cider should be sweet, right? It's getting better. The blueberry flavors are starting to come through a little bit. Mm -hmm. Needs more though. Now, something that we do at the end of this sweetening is we do take a gravity reading because non-fermentable sugar still will read as a gravity. And that way we can give you an idea of about where you might like it or where we liked it so that you can rate it accordingly. But wow, that dissolves fast. Yeah. It's gone already. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, there's just a few pieces that clumped together that aren't dissolving, but the normal stuff is just poof, it's gone. Sure not, it's not just stuff I sucked up from the Oh, siphoning. it could have been the remedy. From the siphoning. The siphoning. <sighs> All right. Wow, that's starting to get really nice. Mm. Mm-hmm. Needs a little bit more, though, I think. What do you think? Mm-hmm. At this point, the fruit flavors are becoming more pronounced. There isn't so much a sweetness as you can tell that it's fruity. So now we want to get that sweetness to make the fruitiness taste more fruity. Fruitier? Fruitastic. Fruitastic. Fruit, fruitalicious. Fruitalicious. <laughs> when you're mixing, you don't want to get too excited. You don't want to go and overdo it like I just did. You want to try to keep it from oxidizing. Basically, you want the movement to occur down here and not so much up here. So that way you're not yeah. making places for oxygen to get into your brew. In other words, do as I say, not as I just did. <laughs> okay, I'm going to pour us. That's, that's about right. What do you think? It depends. It's it's at a good stage it's, now. It's good. It's do you want to just take it that next level and make this a nice sweet summery cider? You probably do. Yeah. So let's go ahead. I just know if this properly um, carbonates. Not if. When. And carbonation can trick the mind into feeling like it's sweeter because mm -hmm. most of us attribute a carbonated beverage with a sweet beverage. 
which is weird because straight up carbonated bitter. Is, is bitter. It's not sweet at all. <laughs> that looks pretty good. All right. Okay, to me, now it's definitely reading as rich, sweet blueberry. But not even as sweet as like a blueberry pie would be or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's got a little tang to it still. Mm -hmm. I think it it's like just the right balance. So let me just make sure this is mixed up properly. All right, so we don't need that anymore. It's like fermentation twister over here. So now we got to take our gravity readings so that way we can convey to you just how sweet we made this. How sweet it is. I probably could have just poured this. You probably could have. But I didn't. Because I so carefully sanitized stuff again for you. Yes. <laughs> the way things are. Oh, wow. We went. We sweetened this a lot. So one of the downsides to sanitizing everything with star sand is sometimes you get foam. They say don't fear the foam, and it's true, don't fear the foam, because it's actually supposed to foam. But sometimes it's annoying. Okay, we allulosed to 1.034. So it's pretty sweet. But, you know, it's a cider. I mean, and there's hardly any calories added. Do you want to pour that in here rather than in there? Too late. I really wish you'd asked me that before I poured it in. Sorry! It's okay, it's okay. All right, so there's a reason she's saying that. We don't need... This. No, I don't need that anymore. Every drop is sacred. See, those four drops would have been wasted. Yep, that tenth of a sip would have been a problem. <laughs> okay, so now we have our brew done and sweetened. This is stable as is. We could bottle this, drink it, and enjoy it. However, if that's what you want to do, go for it. Not a problem. No judgment here. But However, we intend for this to be carbonated. Yeah, you know, a little fizzy. For that to occur, we need to create a situation where a small controlled amount of fermentation can occur. For that, I like to use one ounce or 28 grams of plain old white sugar per gallon of brew. Now, that's a, an approximate. If you have like, we have like 124 ounces here. It's close enough, okay? It's not a big deal. If you wanna really mess around, there are calculators online. Derek, I can link one in the, the description. Brewer's Friend, um, they let you calculate to your heart's content on how much to put in. What I did is I went to that calculator, looked at the lowest amount, the highest amount, and said, let's go somewhere in the middle. And that's how I came up with our one ounce rule of thumb. So to make this really simple, I'm just gonna take that one ounce, put it into a sanitized Pyrex container, by the way, and I'm gonna pour off some of our must directly into that. And essentially I'm making a simple syrup from it. So what this does is it, makes it very easy to mix the sugar. In the old days, um, and some people still do it this way, I don't recommend it, but some people like to do this way. They will take like a teaspoon of sugar or an amount of sugar and put it into every bottle. The problem with that is measuring it precisely. You're probably not measuring it as precisely as you might want to. So some bottles get a little bit more, some bottles get a little bit less. If you're using a median amount, it's probably not a big deal, but some bottles will be more carbonated than others. Some might overcarbonate, some might undercarbonate, and if you use too much, some will explode. They just will. That is that is what happens. Now this may seem a little picky on our part, but if you think about the science between fermentation, uh, the ratios of the fermentable sugars to the amount of carbon dioxide that's built up in a small volume yeah. versus a larger volume, there is far more room for error in the larger volume than is in the smaller volume. So adding everything in, weighing rather than measuring with yes, a I actually measuring weighed device, it. So it was exactly is going grams. to make a much more readily controlled environment for your carbonation to avoid things going awry. Now, another option is to use carbonation drops, which is basically just sugar pills. Um, 
Sure, you can use those if you want to. Um, just one or whatever they say to use. Yeah, I don't know. follow the follow manufacturer's their directions. In, uh, recommendations and don't ask us because we don't use I've never them. Used them. Just so use we don't have any reference to guide you in that aspect. They are essentially the same thing as using sugar. It's just in a little pill form, so it's easier to sure. measure and be relatively accurate and precise. Do want to mix this up really, really good. Because if I don't, then it's the same thing as putting a little bit too much in this one, a little bit more in that one. The last bottle would have all the sugars. <laughs> and doing it in this way, you can make sure that your sugar is well dissolved in that solution so that it'll be easierly... Easierly? Easierly. Easierly. She's making up new words today, folks. Incorporated into this solution. Easierly. I... CSB word of the day. It sounds like something her mom would say. It, it does. Brian always says that if you ever meet my parents, I make so much more sense. And it is painfully true. Some of you have seen her dad. You probably won't meet Judy. She's camera shy. All right, I'm going to call that dissolved. And now I'm just going to pour it in carefully so as to not make too much splash. And now we're going to stir this to yep. make sure... Make sure it's equally dispersed throughout the must. And then, very simple, we're going to do this off camera just because it's a lot faster. We're going to use an auto siphon with a bottling wand that has a springy thingy on the end. You put this in your bottle. I mean, obviously it'll be attached to the hose. Put this in your bottle, the liquid flows, and you lift up, the liquid stops. That way you can fill each bottle to the prescribed amount, cap them off, and we'll be back to show you how many bottles we ended up getting. I'm predicting seven, but it might be eight because we put more allulose in there. So we turn off the camera, we're starting to get all our stuff together, and explicitives abound. Why? Because we forgot something. This isn't something we do very often, but this particular brew has been sitting for a couple of weeks, and we did have where our last attempt at natural carbonation didn't carbonate. So there is the possibility that in racking and racking again and letting it sit, that we've racked out enough yeast that there's no active colony in there anymore to carbonate. You don't need a lot, just a little bit. So I have here the open packet of SO4 yeast, probably the one we used to make this, and I'm just literally going to put in just a good pinch, like that. Now we want to mix that through so that we have it mixed throughout the solution. You might be wondering, why are you adding more yeast? Like I said, we may have removed all the yeast, so we just need enough to eat up the sugars that are there. We call it insurance yeast. That way, we're pretty much guaranteed to get that carbonation to happen. You want to mix all the way through. Get them all the way in there. Dissolve everything. I know. I got little guys that aren't fulfilling they, they, their they're destiny. They're not going to fulfill their destiny? I got them. I got them. Okay. Now, I'm aware that it's not necessarily going to dissolve fully into this must, and it would have to sit for that to happen. But if we do that, then it could ferment the sugars before it made carbonation and got captured. So... We're going to do the best we can. This is another one of those situations where this is just insurance yeast. It's not a guarantee yeast, but it should help. Well, it's bottled. We're using swing tops. Oops. Because they're convenient and reusable and there's no waste. We're also using clear ones because the color is so pretty and we want to see it. Yeah. Now this one, we only got it this far. So we're not going to allow this one to carbonate because... Because we don't know for sure. Sorry to cut you off with that, no. but we don't know for sure if it's safe or dangerous to do. So if somebody actually knows, please tell me because I hear conflicting reports all the time. Lots of people say it's fine. Other people say it's dangerous. I don't really know. I've always been told it was dangerous. So that's why we don't do it. So here's a, a Brerica fun fact. Uh, we share a brain. We don't actually have separate brains. And so Brian knows when I do that little weird Derica pause, that's because I expect him to go ahead and say the words that my brain isn't functioning to find because he's got that portion of the brain that day. Yeah, we, we share it. It's under the table. It, we it, just like touch it. Yeah, we, we got it. You know, if you see my eyes go like this, it's because yeah, I just touched the brain. the brain. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't seem to affect her quite as much. She's kind of on that keel all the time, so it's all good. Yeah. Um, but anyway, how long to carbonate? A week, maybe two weeks usually, in the temperatures that we have. If you're a little cooler, it might be a little bit longer. By the way, our temperatures are 75 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. And what are we going to put these in? We're going to put these in what we lovingly and kindly 
term the bomb shelter. And basically it's just a heavy duty plastic tub with a lid. So that way, just in case something goes awry, that awryness is going to occur with inside the confounds of said shelter and not all over our house. Yep. It should prevent flying glass from coming out and it, you know, confines the uh, mess to one small area, much easier to yep. clean up. Now luckily, that has not been an issue thus and far. we've never had one. But better safe than sorry, and we suggest strongly that you implemise something similar. Implemise. Implemise. I'm just making You are making just totally words. making up words today. You know what I was saying though, right? You, you got it. Yeah. You got me. Yeah. I speak fluent Derica, so <laughs> I totally get it. Anyway, we will see you once these have carbonated to give you a final tasting. It's been in the bomb shelter for two weeks. Except for, what, two days? Yes. It's or was it yesterday? Been in the fridge for a day. Just yesterday. Just yesterday, yeah. The real question? It's the moment of truth. Did it carbonate? Now, we make them cold because if you don't make it cold and, it, and it's warm when you try to do this, it could really geyser on you, so you want to be careful on that. There's a little, a a little hiss, not much. And if you do the pour, like, really, whoa, look at that color! It's a beautiful color. If you do the pour super stupid high, you can make it, like, fizz. Watch. See, like this? Yeah. Or you can make a mess. Yeah, it makes a mess, too. Hey, at least, at least I'm not the only one who's making messes. I make messes all the time. <laughs> the color is gorgeous. It is just beautifully, ridiculously yeah. gorgeous. This is beautiful. There is a little bit of fizz in there. I see little blue, tiny bubbles coming up the side. Red. Oh, the aroma is like blueberry pie. Yeah. Wow, that smells really nice. So we got a beautiful clarity, a little bit of fizz, good blueberry smell. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's pedaling. Uh, it's more than pedaling. There's a little carbonation there. Yeah. But, you, wow. You can definitely get it on the tongue, the carbonation. Wow. So, <laughs> he's doing as well. Yeah. Um. So, I know it doesn't look carbonated, it is. It is. It's not as carbonated as I would like it's it to be. It's not carbonated, you know, it's not, it doesn't have a beautiful but head and all that, but... It, it definitely... Yeah, you can, it, you it, can there's feel There's effervescence it. Yes. on the tongue. So, I'm only mildly disappointed. But flavor-wise, <laughs> this is blueberry cider. This, this is... Right, and I just remembered why we didn't like our last one. Yeah, was we did this because of the smell on the last one. Right. The, that is not present here at all. I'm getting smells like blueberry pie. Blueberry like pie oh, yeah, on the aroma. Is, and there is, is nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I could smell this all day. I could drink this all day. I am perfectly happy. Yeah, even the mild carbonation is actually working for me. It's not taking away from the beverage at all, but you do get a little effervescence on the tongue. I think yeah. that that adds to it. Yeah. This is wonderful. I would be sad if I wasn't getting that sensation, but because I am getting that sensation, I'm okay. I'm, I'm happy. I don't like this at all. Can you <laughs> That color, it's like battery powered color. I mean, that's that's some serious color. It reminds me of Khajiit blood as far as the color goes. Kind of, yeah. The pea, the whatever pea. Butterfly pea. Butterfly pea, pea. yeah, something pea. Not, not skeeter pea. Oh boy. This is only the second tasting today. <laughs> we have two more to do. But as a as a refreshing beverage to have like on a hot summer day, very little is going to be better than this. Yeah. This is very little. This, this is, is incredibly amazingly good. And I'm so happy that we finally got a blueberry to where I wanted it because I know we've tasted uh We've done a Two few Warriors blueberries. blueberry pie, I think is what they call mm -hmm. it. It's I would I want to look to the shelf to find it. It's, I, gone. it's gone. It's gone. Two bottles that they sent us. Gone. Why? Because of me. I love that stuff. I'm so glad they're back into production. Please, please get blueberries, guys. We, we need some more of that in my life. Something of note. This is 7.6% ABV. This is not a weak no, cider. No, it's on the uh, uh, medium to high end. But that was like my I want that much blueberry in something that we make, and mm. when we never got the blueberry to be oh, punchy this is... enough. This this is blueberry. There's no you 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 can 
blindfold me and hand me this and be like, mmm, blueberry, mmm. But when we get talking okay. about different things, yes, you taste the blueberry, without a doubt blueberry, and it's like a deep, rich blueberry. A little bit of sweetness there to really make, up the, make it work. There's a, that little bit of effervescence. I'm not getting any off flavors. No. I don't taste the alcohol, no. which is scary because... You can oh, drink yeah. a lot of this really yeah. fast. And because and it's nice and super chilled, mm -hmm. our mini fridge gets things a little bit colder than our normal fridge does. Yep. Uh, this which could just, have made the pop less too. That's true. Because it's very true. cold. I mean, it it's like 40 so degrees. Cold. Yeah. Uh, but it's delightful that way. I'm really enjoying the experience of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's there's a nice crispness to the, the flavor that comes with blueberry, but it's got enough sweetness that that's not a, a bad thing in yeah. any way. But they do kind of combat each other. Um, it almost tastes like way. we added lemon. I don't think we did add There's, lemon in this There one, might be we? a little bit of lemon in this. I recall. It's possible. I tend to put lemon in things to brighten up the flavors. Sure. It's really hard to say anything negative. Yeah. The only thing is I do wish it carbonated just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. 10%, 20% more carbonation. Do you recall the process? I know we just finished this because it's just been carbonating. It was a pretty fast, straightforward. I think it was just a straightforward, simple process. Do it to it kind of scenario. And I just stirred up all the goop in the bottom, so I will save that for you for later because I don't, I won't be drinking that now. <laughs> um, I have a problem with goop. He does. It's it's back to his military service days. Jungle so. coffee, not my thing. Anyway. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, I think I'm ready to give this a score. So we're going to do the two score mm -hmm. on this. The first one is going to be the performance and repeatability. What that means is, did it do what we expected it to do? Did it work? Like, was there a stall? Was there anything odd or weird about it? Um, did it carbonate properly? And how repeatable is this recipe? Could we, the way we did this, hand you the instructions, which we've done in this video, and can you make it? very close to what we've done. That's important. To me, that's half the score. That is a huge deal because we're a teaching channel. We're here to teach you guys how to do it. We wanna show you the pitfalls and the good, the bad, the ugly, but we also wanna be able to say, hey, you should make this just like we did. And it's gonna come out like what we did. That's how it's supposed to be. I am ready. I am ready too. One, two, three, 9.5, yep. Let me guess, half five. point because it didn't carbonate as much exactly. as we wanted. Yep. Everything else is beautiful. Yep. This went dry, so we could back <clears throat> sweeten it with allulose, and then we carbonated it, and everything went exactly the way it should. If you follow the steps in this with the volumes the way we did it, do your measurements, do everything right, it should come out very, very, very close to what we did. Hopefully you get a little more carbonation, but that's the only thing. Um, but that's it. That's the only thing I would ding this for. Yeah. Everything else is beautiful. That that color is one of the best colors, most interesting colors I've ever seen. It's a gorgeous Brew. color. I'm wondering, since this did come out to a 7.6, and I know that's still in the range of SO4. Yeah. I wonder if perhaps instead of using SO4 as the insurance yeast, adding something just a slightly more higher alcohol Okay, well, tolerance. SO4 is a 10%. I know, I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out. Maybe it just needed longer? The carbonation thing, man, just yep. irritating. We're working on it, don't worry. <laughs> We're working on it. Irritating. Um, the keg carbonation thing, I'm taking some tips from a few of you guys. Yes, and, so uh, thank you for that. Yeah, and we're gonna be working on that soon, sooner rather than later. But anyway. All right, now we're on to our personal preference. Which means, if we were handed this and said, what do you think of it? Like, what, what, what kind of score would you give it? That's, that's where we're at with this now. Oh, this is a tough one. <laughs> um, I mean, it's a cider, so you have to keep that in mind. It's not a full-on mead, it's not a wine. Um, and this had apple juice in it, mm -hmm. like we stuck true to the cider. It's a real cider because okay. it's got apple um, juice. So that's like lovely because I'm not getting any of the apple funk. No, I do get a, a touch of apple sweetness in there. It's just, just a little bit of apple sweetness. But the blueberry is definitely the, the dominant player. Yeah. yeah. But I do detect a little apple now that I'm really thinking about it. Kind of like an mm -hmm. apple peel almost. Um, that yep. 
Yeah. Okay. Natural carbonation always leaves a little bit of sediment in the bottle because it is a fermentation process. So just keep that in mind. Um, that's why the bottles are shaped like they are. The neck should catch it. If you do a gentle pour, if you look, it'll see, there's catch. a little bit right here. If you're impatient, like me, then, or like I did, you know, that's why I started up. So this score is totally about personal enjoyment, how much you like it. Um, generally speaking, our scale goes from one through ten, with an occasional eleven reserved for those things that are just absolutely incredibly amazing. One means I probably would not drink it. I would not choose it. It's like, might dump it out. Yeah. Kind of thing. Most likely you dump it out. Yeah. Uh, 10 is just like, yep, I would think of that brew and say, I want that one. Five is kind of mid-range. It's the one that you're looking through and you go, oh, oh yeah. yeah, I'll drink that one. You didn't think of it, but it, it, it's okay. You know, it's, it's fine. So that gives you kind of the idea of our range. Do you have a number? I do. So do I. One, two, three, 10.5. <laughs> so I kept mine at a 9.5 for the same reason why I give it a 9.5 for, for performance is because I am getting the sensation of the the effervescence, the carbonation, but I would like it to be a little bit more. Um, but other than that, it's wonderful. I gave it a 10.5 because I was going to give it an 11, but I had to knock off half a point for that non carbonation thing. But you know what? In all honesty, I don't give a crap because 10.5 is still amazing. <laughs> so that half point, not making it an 11 means like, you know, the, yeah, you know what I mean? Like it, it it's so good. It's good. I don't even care Drink that this. it's barely carbonated. Drink it. Don't care if it carbonates. Or carbonation not. scale of one to 10. This is like a three. Okay. Like it's got a noticeable amount of carbonation. It's just not super strong. Do I even care anymore? No, it's that good. The flavor on this is so incredibly yeah. good that I don't even care that the, that it's only partially carbonated. Yeah, I'm so happy with the blueberry on this that I don't need to make anything blueberry anymore. Just make these. Just make these. This is so good. Do you have anything else you want to say? I think it was a good ending. I have one more thing that I want to say. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>